Welcome to Discover Joyous Love with Anita DeFrancesco as your host. This is a hybrid of topics under the subjects of mindfulness, sexuality, and relationships. Hello, everyone. This is episode 30. Do your expectations exceed your reality is our topic. Reality versus expectations. And we're talking about the expectations and the reality of your relationships, of your romance, of your sexual life, of of a lot of different things, but primarily of your relationships and sexuality and what you expect from your partner. And should we be expecting in any relationship or should we be appreciating? So there's a thin line between appreciation and expecting. And where is the love? This is where the love comes in. So you have to sort of find the love because we can get lost. Love can get lost. It can get smeared. It can get trespassed on. And expectations are more egoistic. They're more materialistic. But the way that you learn about your expectations is by knowing yourself and appreciating and loving yourself. So I'm just going to talk to you about a few things here. And one of the, um, here's a saying that um, I, I uh, picked up from The Great Expectations, uh, the, the movie, the story. His expectations had robbed him of fully appreciating reality. So think about that. Reality is so important, the moment, where you are, what you're doing. Are your expectations are your expectations and what you expect for the future robbing you from the, the moment at hand? So this is what you really want to focus on. As Eckhart Tolle says, being in the present moment and, and being and what I'm saying is being in the present moment is very exquisite, very divine, very sacred. There is nothing like being in the present moment. And this is your reality. But then again, there's that part of us that does not accept our reality, that does not like ourselves, that does not like things about ourselves or who we are, where we come from or what we're doing or who our mate is uh, or how much money we have. And so that reality gets dimmed and it turns into a character of denial. And when you live in this denial, you are faced with characters of defense, of having a defensive chip on your shoulder or discharging anger all the time or not being happy or living from a hateful heart rather than a open, loving, vulnerable heart. And when we are not accepting of who we are, these are the things that shape us. And so what we want to do is work toward learning how to, again, this is discover joyous love about loving yourself and Sexuality plays a big part in all of this. So let me talk to you about society. What society does, they paint this pretty picture for us of the ideal romantic relationship. Cosmopolitan magazine, she's perfect, he's perfect. Uh, in the movies, in, in, in the, um, even in the songs we listen to, how the pretty picture of the romantic relationship is so perfect and that it is the reality, but it is not the reality. They paint a picture of, they go beyond the reality of the expectations. So the viewer, the audience, looks at this romantic movie and wants to compare their life with that. But look at the reality of your life and where you are and who you are. So, but it is good to watch these kind of movies to gain role model, role, role model ship looking at people that are in love, say you come from a divorced family, you may not see parents together. So this role modelship is important or looking at the dream because the dream and the vision are there. It's part of our imagination, our conceptualization. And we need to have that in order to even embark upon uh, a romantic sexual relationship of any kind. It's very important. Um, Song lyrics are all misconceptions of what we should expect from our partners and what if. So, but the, again, then again, you weigh it out, the reality versus the expectation. And sometimes when our reality does not meet our expectations, we can be set back. We can 
actually collapse in our psychological being. We may even resort to a, to uh, addictions such as alcohol or or drugs, or or we may be, we may collapse in a sense that it leaves you empty because you had these this this certain expectation maybe from childhood your parents pushed you that you had they expected so much from you but you weren't capable or you didn't have enough of that vital energy or that desire or that drive for whatever it was that you were being pushed into. Again, coming back to yourself, your heart, appreciating, loving yourself. And sometimes our parents, they don't understand that we really have to cultivate our own independence and our own heart and come back to who we are and learn to find our own drive, to find our own desire and not live other people's desires. How many people's desires are you living? trying to be something you're not. Get away from the statements of I want to be rather than I am. I am is better than I want to be a famous actress. I am an actress, even if you're a small time actress or whatever. I am, I want to be a doctor. So there's this reality again, an expectation. I want to be verse I am, or I can be. Reality is one thing. The fairy tale is another what you want, what you expect, and what you get. Life is a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, as Forrest Gump says. Now, here's an expectation. My partner completes me, my other half. Now, I've heard that over and over with couples. Now, there is such a thing as twin flames, and when, but twin flames is the ideal, the ideal love of, 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 the highest, of the highest power of a soulmate. And if you've met your twin flame, you will know it because it is your mirror. It is your other. Well, people walk around and say, my partner completes me. And that is my other half. And that is a statement that is very debilitating. And actually, it is it is taking away a part of yourself or giving a part of yourself away or not even acknowledging who you are. You are yourself. The reality of that will be I am whole on my own. Wholeness and self-love is first and foremost. So if your partner has to complete you, then you are lacking self-love. You, you don't need to depend on another to make you feel valid and worthy. Find that within yourself, I'm saying. I'm Anita DeFrancesco here with you, Discover Joyous Love, episode 30. Expectations meet reality, or reverse reality. Do your expectations meet your reality is what we are talking about today. Huh. <clears throat> Here's another expectation. Um, I should be the center of my partner's world. Wouldn't we all love that to be the center of our partner's world? But then the reality is my partner and I have whole fulfilling lives of our own and should be continued. So when you meet a partner, you're, you, you, you sometimes expect that they love you. You're in the honeymoon stage and that all of a sudden you are going to be the center of their life. Mm, mm, mm. Big letdown. Again, collapse a collapse can happen. It's you're charged up, you're excited, you're passionate. But then the reality is you go, you, you have your own fulfilling lives to complete and be who you are. And then you come together. So remember, let's try to avoid this expectation mentality because it's a victimization mentality, folks. If your partner expects you to drop all your outside interests, this is a big red flag. It's narcissistic and it's controlling. And you don't want to be in a relationship like that. If they expect you to drop everything just for them. Healthy, a healthy, um, realistic way would be supporting each other's outside interest, even while building your life together. So in other words, your partner does this or does that. They have a, a team, say, for example, they're on a bowling team and he or she is with the opposite sex a lot of the time in the teams and activities they take part in. And, you know, you want them to drop all this because maybe you have insecurities or maybe you have jealousy or maybe you have obsession. This is control. But what you should be doing is working to heal each other, to work towards supporting each other's outside interest and maintain and sustain the building of you and each other together. He and she. Expectation. A healthy relationship should be easy all the time. Oh, this is so, so wrong. That is the dream. 
Because you found love, it should be easy. Love is not enough. You must continually work and nourish and support the love that you have in your life, the love that you meet, whether it's a true love, a soulmate, a twin flame, someone that you want to be with forever, or someone that you want to just have a sexual fling with or a short time with or a few years you want to have each other, whatever it is, it's not going to be easy. And the reality is life has its ups and downs. It's life, folks. Life happens, right? <laughs> but together, we pull it together. So coming together and supporting one another in the relationship. You know, you, a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend together should be a team. But what I find is they, they go against each other. They hate each other for meeting each other. They hate each other for being in love or being having that feeling of love, of commitment. And they start to pull away in a sense, but pull back, push and pull, push and pull. And, and, and they almost um, go against each other. Rather, you should support one another, defend one another, um, work together toward whatever it is you're working toward. And using, you know, using good conflict resolution skills and compromising. And that is how you stay together because the conflict resolution skills and compromising involve very good communication. And you can adapt communication. Now, here's another expectation. If my partner really loved me, they would change. No one changes. People adapt and adjust. They grow into you. You grow into them. But no one changes. Choosing a partner who we regard as a project is not healthy because you don't want to fix your partner or change your partner. You want to accept. And if there are things that you really don't like, you need to weigh it out. Maybe you can't live with someone that's an alcoholic, or maybe you can't live with someone that doesn't make enough money for you, whatever it is, because your expectations are going to exceed the reality. And one day the collapse will come. The fall down will come, the pain. And we want to stay in the reality as much as we can and work to have better things together. If it's important for your partner to have money, maybe you can work together and open a business. Put your mind together, support one another, and you certainly can become rich together if that's one of your goals. So the reality is I love my partner for who they are and who they are becoming. She might be a student. He might be a student. But is that student going to go anywhere? Hey, one day that student could be rich and famous in whatever it is they're doing or very popular or very successful. And so we have to accept and surrender. Accepting your partner unconditionally, this is where this goes, right? People don't change, but they adjust and adapt. I said acceptance. Expecting one to change is clearly, clearly disrespectful, folks. It is clearly disrespectful. Connecting with the self. So now what I'm going to take you into how that we can help ourselves and what we need to do. The first thing you want to do from Anita's Tantra Wisdom and Discover Joy's Love Work. I'm a relationship and love, love and relationship coach and a somatic psychotherapist. The first thing we want to do is connect with the self to know what you want. What is it that you really want out there? If you know what you want, and again, if you're young and you're growing and you're exploring, of course, we're going to learn as we go along. But we don't want to formulate patterns that live in the body, in the somatic body, that take away from, uh, from the present moment, that, that take away from fully appreciating the reality. So we have to monitor and stay on top of our psychological and emotional health. And sometimes we don't even know that we need to do that. So that's why you listen to things like this. Self-love is number one, knowing what you want. And over time, you will know what you want and you will see it. And you will separate what it is that you want and what you don't want. You will, you will uh, you know, have that, that boundary of like, well, this is good and this isn't. You will weigh things out. Are you filling a void when you get into these relationships where you have expectations. Are you filling a void? Do you even know what a void is? Let's tap into the feelings. Let's take a breath. <sighs> tap down, way down into your stomach, way down into the diaphragmatic area. And let's place your hands there and let's breathe. Because if the void is there, I want you to be aware of that. I would like that for, for, to you, for that to surface at this moment so that we can help you inject some 
love into that space. Does the person meet your expectations? Now, you can meet someone. Do they meet your expectations? Well, what are they? I mean, you have a list of what it is that you expect from someone. Sometimes it's just best to appreciate someone rather than expect. Because sometimes you will learn that there's other things about them that you really do like. And the expectations will go by the wayside. If you know what you want, then you're able to know what you don't want. And that makes perfect sense. huh? Date yourself. This is what I'm going to ask you to do now. I want you to have a relationship with yourself, with your own feelings. It's something in my Live Free book that I talk about how as a child that I was very sick in a hospital with rheumatic fever and my parents couldn't come to see me and I was alone. I was isolated. I became an isolated child from this and the only, and, I, and children were dying around me. And, um, and the only thing I had to resort to was the relationship to my feelings because we had heart disease. We had rheumatic fever, which affects the heart in the 1960s. And the only thing that I could do to save myself, because I know I witnessed other children dying and I didn't want to be one of them as a child. You're thinking, oh, no, I don't want to die. And that makes you appreciate life. And from that moment on, when I was nine years old, I appreciated life more than anyone. And that's why I have this. This, this thing called Discover Joy's Love, this thing about myself where I really appreciate life and I just live life to its moment and I, I'm wild and I'm excited and I'm really happy. I'm high on life. I make love to life. That's what Tantra wisdom is about. So, I, so what I'm going to ask you is to date yourself. I don't mean literally date yourself, but yes, date yourself, love yourself, honor yourself, spend time alone, build that relationship to that voice inside, to that silent space Build that relationship to your own feelings. Sit there, hug yourself, cry, feel humble, feel bad for yourself. Take that sleep time, that exercise time, moving and dancing and breathing, all kinds of things that that are, are that that can aid your journey out there. All of these spiritual activities that are around and available. You have to really search for them online. You don't really have to because they're all over. Everything is there to help you. Fully appreciate, fully appreciate yourself or are you comparing so when we compare we do not appreciate you meet someone you compare them even in a sexual way you compare someone in bed to someone else you are with rather than fully appreciating dissect the moment dissecting things in your own way so that you can fully receive the vulnerableness that is there as human beings as Americans, as Americans, we always expect more. And this is a this this is a phenomenon that the American people, they want more and more and always. Expectations and sex and romance. So these are the things that once you start to learn to love yourself and appreciate yourself, and then you will start to understand that when you meet a beloved. It doesn't have to be a beloved forever. It can just be a beloved. That you, you, will, you will demonstrate and receive respect, give respect, receive appreciation, give appreciation, and you will be able to experience with communication the love that you need to grow. And it's okay to want more. It's but okay to appreciate. So it is okay to want and not be needy. It is okay to want and need support and love and affection and communication and better touch in the bedroom, better touch in the sexual way. It's okay to need and want that without being needy. Now, the Charles Dickens novel, the movie, The Great Expectations. This was a movie about great expectations, which involved money and a right woman. Uh, if you, if you, I'm sure you've seen the movie. It's, it's, a, it's an old movie and when he learned that the money was not part of the larger plan, he realized that he had taken for granted so many of the relationships. He was supposedly offered some family money and the right woman, and then the money somehow never be, never materialized into being part of the bigger picture. And he put them together, the money and the right woman, because his expectations were having the right woman meant having money. And it didn't end up that way. And he realized he had taken for granted so many relationships. His expectations have robbed him of fully appreciating reality. 
Thank you for tuning in. You've been listening to Discover Joyous Love. I am your host, Anita DeFrancesco. DiscoverJoyousLove.com, TantraWisdom.com. It is the same website. You can reach me there and find, um, find me there and email me if you would like to do some personal work with me. And also I have two books, Live Free, which is a spiritual book I wrote about my life and my journey. And then the Donna Gentile story, which is a true crime story. And I'll be at the Crime Con Convention in uh, May of this year, 2022, and um, in uh, Vegas, Las Vegas. So today's date is March 5th, uh, 2022. And uh, have a great evening. Thank you.